Hey guys and gals, welcome to this week's pre-foreclosure tip of the week from pre-foreclosure daily guys. Chris, the drummer Bowes, and Bob Lachance. How are you guys doing today? Uh, we got some good stuff this week. Um, one of the things we want to touch upon, managemyshortsale.com. That's our online short sale management and loan modification tool. Mm -hmm. Ton of upgrades, go check that out. Um, too many upgrades for me to even cover on this, <laughs> on this video. It's number one, HFC Beneficial. They changed the way they, the, the language actually on their short sale approval letters. We'll touch upon that in a second. Um, and Wells Fargo, uh, we have a big long email with how their process rolls now. So there's some good stuff here in this video. So first, let's just get into it. Start mm -hmm. talking about HFC Beneficial. What's the right. new, new and uh, improved with them? Well, they're no longer like for for any of you guys who've been in the game for a little while. Uh, they used to pretty much on every se and this is when they're in the second position now. Just to be clear, um, on pretty much every loan, they would attempt to do some sort of a promissory note or payment plan after closing. So this is when they accept their short sales. They typically used to ask for some sort of promissory note. Now they're changing that. Right now, now at this point, they just are uh, looking to get you know a decent amount of money um, you know out of the closing anywhere from you know five to ten depending on the balance maybe fifteen percent usually closer to around the ten percent uh, mark and if they can get that at closing they're actually just doing a full uh, full release and, and um, full set settlement full, settlement full, added, right. yeah. settlement in full so the good thing is where they used to ask for promissory notes they're typically on average accepting ten percent of the principal right. of their a total amount of their loan, not arrearages, none of that, just the principal mm -hmm. on their on their loan. Okay, they're they're taking ten percent of that and they're giving full releases. Yeah, okay, just closing it down right at that point. They're not uh, trying to get any more. So they're not so. trying to go after our sellers for a deficit judgment later on. That's right. huge. Make sure you guys know that. Put it in whatever lender profiles that you guys have, running notes for each lender, uh, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Right. Cool. Mm -hmm. Now, Chris, let's go over at Wells Fargo. Yeah. Okay? Your buddy there at Wells Fargo. What's the latest <laughs> and greatest there? Well, the cool thing is, I mean, we we uh, we always, if anyone ever asks us, like, um, you know, what types of things affect the timeline of a, of getting a certain short sale done, you know, we'll say, well, it's you know, going to be the lender is a big part of it. Uh, another big part of it is also the negotiator. So um, how long? So for instance, if because Chris deals with this all day long, right. a, an agent will call him and say, hey, Chris. How long is this process going to take? It's with ABC Mortgage or um, right. Wells Fargo, Bank of America, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So right. that's what Crest is in reference to. Right. So basically, um, you know, one of the things I always tell agents or, or homeowners, whoever I'm talking to, is that another big piece is uh, the negotiator can, can play a big part. And um, basically, you know, we know one of the ways we know um, whether or not a negotiator has got his or her act together is, uh, you know, we'll get an email like this where... They send it out and they basically outline full detail, two page how the, detail, how the short sale process is going to work. Um, and so basically, that's one of the ways that we know. Now we've gotten you know emails like this from other uh, negotiators at other lenders, um, but basically you know here's here's one negotiator that you know has her act together. So. And what you're going to want to do too is you want to you're going to want to cut and paste this and put it on like I. I talked a little bit about before we have lender profiles um, in our office where every single lender that we work with we have a, a list of questions down and some notes at the bottom mm -hmm. so next time we work with that one lender we know exactly how they operate in the typical time frame that mm -hmm. these lenders are going to take from start to finish that is absolutely imperative in today's market in today's investing world to let our clients know whether you're working on behalf of attorneys uh, agents, investors, homeowners, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Setting those expectations right up front is absolutely imperative. Right. It is absolutely huge. Mm -hmm. So you guys in your business, you have to start a, a lender profile like we have in our office. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have to start identifying these things so you know exactly what to expect each time, especially when something changes too. Right. Right. Okay. Right. That's absolutely huge. Chris touched upon something that was uh, really important that I, I just want to stress, and that's dealing with negotiators. You deal with top-of-the-line negotiators, experienced negotiators, professional negotiators, and you also deal with the bottom-of-the-barrel negotiators, which, mm -hmm. unfortunately, they just don't know what they're doing, and they're bitter. Maybe they just came from the collection side of business, now the lost mitigators, and they're just pissed off at the world. Right. Okay. Know who you're dealing with. Best way to deal with it is kill them with kindness. Okay. Mm -hmm. Chris does a great job at this. If someone's adversarial to him, he backs them off their perch. He just basically takes them off their high horse, 
backs him down, and then he gets emails like this, okay? <laughs> that tells him exactly what their process is and how it goes, okay? Mm -hmm. I wanna to touch upon this uh, email just a little bit. Um, one thing I wanna to touch upon at the bottom, um, it, this video would take way too long for us to go over this exact email. Way too much info. Yeah, one of this important things right here says, please do not expect me to respond to every email just to let you know I have received something. I try very hard to review each file at least twice a week. If I get to your file and you have not responded, I will push the file out 24 hours. Meaning, if they call Chris, they call me, they call you, or they email you and you have not responded to them within, 20, within 24 hours, they push it out. They give you the benefit of the doubt. 24 hours. Now listen to this part. If you, if you have still not responded after the 24 hours, I will have to remove the file, meaning close the file. You're done. Mm -hmm. So you better make sure that the phone number you're giving them, okay, even if you're on vacation, you have somebody covering for you. Mm -hmm. okay? Or you let them know through autoresponder that you're out of office until a certain time so they don't close your file. That is huge right there. Yeah. yeah. So that is huge. I think that's it, Chris. Yeah, I think that's about it. That's that was a lot, a lot of good information. That was, that was a great pre foreclosure daily grind. Anyway, again, we have uh, our boot camp that we're actually running next week. Doors are closing this weekend. So go to shortsellbootcamp2010.com if you guys are interested. It's going to be killer. All the best, latest information. It's this on steroids. Yeah. <laughs> also, our managemysortsell.com for our members. We have our open training, open QA and training webinar this Thursday. It's not going to be Wednesday because Wednesday is St. Patrick's Day. And quite frankly, I will not be able to, Pat and I won't be able to do a call on Wednesday night on St. Patty's Day because, you know, we'll have a couple too many cocktails. So that being said, we have to move, we have to move it to Thursday. But anyway, Chris the Drummer Bowles, Bob Lachance with this week's pre-foreclosure. This is my